Hello everyone. I feel led of the Lord to make this video. And I ask you to please take the time to listen to it. It, it could be quite long. I'm not really sure. But I ask you to take the time out of your life to listen to it. Not that I'm anyone special. Because I'm, I'm, not, I'm not anyone special. But the Lord has taught me a lot in my life. And he continues to teach me. And he has called me to preach his whole truth. All of his words. Not unrightly divide some to make false converts like we have so many. Uh, so I ask you to please listen to the whole thing. And I ask you to please share it. And my goal, and the Lord's goal in moving upon me to make this video, is to warn, to warn us and encourage you to live holy and obey the Lord, to walk the straight and narrow. Encourage you to watch a lot of the videos the Lord's given me to put on, on this YouTube channel. But I want to title this video, I think, I think I want to title it, There's a Serious Sin Problem in the Church, quote unquote church, okay? When I say church, I mean there's so many church buildings, which are supposedly in these church buildings is supposedly the church, the body of Christ. Uh, uh, true followers of Christ even though that's really and truly not very many people in the in the in the overwhelming majority of churches it's, it's, it's just a small remnant it's just a few like the Lord says broad is the way to hell and many they go in and narrow or straight is the way to heaven and few there be to find it but there's a sin problem in the quote unquote church and in the lives of professing Christians. Okay? Now I know this from talking to people. Now if you look at my videos, this is the first time I've shared a personal message in the, in the last few weeks, if I'm not mistaken. I've been out in front of a couple churches since, since I've shared a personal message with you like this and uh you know the lord is doing i'm doing what the lord's called me to do and he's showing me by going out and doing it he's he's showing me what he's already told me things that i would experience and uh it's a tough job and uh I'd give my phone number to one guy on, uh, on one of the videos, and I've had several people contact me to watch the video and took my phone number off of the video and contacted me. Oh, oh, one guy's been message, messaging me pretty regular, a young man. In Florida and another man in Ohio called me we talked for quite a while and talked several times and uh, but before I get into the scriptures about sin okay and righteousness you see I've heard this for many, many years, and you've seen it in some of the videos when you see me go out. Like, at the Presbyterian Church, and I don't record every single thing when I go out, but I've heard this so many times in my life as I evangelize, whether it's on the job, or going out in the street, or going to events. 
or at the grocery store or wherever it may be many different places sometimes even the gas station and uh but we're gonna get into these scriptures after I share my heart a little bit about a few people that call me uh, and where I'm at right now in my life spiritually speaking uh, but we hear a lot I've heard this many times you may use these scriptures you may unrightly divide them you may not understand them uh, and I'm going to try to help you I go out and I preach what the Lord wants me to preach narrow and straight is the way Feet or be to find it. Our Savior said that, ladies and gentlemen. And he said a lot of other things. And the scripture says, Without holiness, no one shall see God. But so many false preachers, so many deceived preachers deceiving others. You hear scriptures like, They're unri unrightly divided. Oh, well, the Bible says there's none righteous, no, not one. And they'll just stop right there and unrightly divide that, like you heard at the Presbyterian church where I was threatened with arrest. Falsely accused of disrupting people's day-to-day -day business when, quite frankly, they were disrupting me. I would prefer just to stand out in front of these churches and preach the Word and the people just stand there and listen, okay, but I try to respect them and talk to them when they come up to me. Okay. Uh, but but if I was not disrupting anybody, okay, they were they were choosing to talk to me. So that's fault I was being falsely accused, okay, by that particular cop. Other in the other cases the police left me alone, thank God. Okay. But we'll hear that scripture unrightly divided about there's none righteous, no, not one. And then we'll hear uh, Scripture unrightly divided saying uh, we all have sin in our life. I mean, I've heard this so many times. Oh, you can't go a day without sinning. You a liar. You a liar if you can believe you, believe you can uh, go without sinning or, or go a day without sinning. Uh, you sin every day. I mean, I've heard all this stuff. Okay, and I want to get into what Scripture says about that. So those are those are two important scriptures that are unrightly divided and abused. And I want to get into Scripture. I want to I want to counter that with Scripture, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, I want to I want to I want to show you how if people is looking for a way out, and you may be one of them, search your heart. I want you to search your heart. Don't cut the video off. Okay, humble yourself. If you really, really, truly want to please God and you really do want to inherit the kingdom of God and you really, really, truly don't want to deceive yourself and, and or be deceived, hear me out. Please hear me out. Okay? Take the time. Okay? God uses people. Okay? The word says, how can they hear except to be a preacher, etc., etc.? Okay. Uh, but before we get into those scriptures, I'm getting ready to I'm getting ready to uh, begin another fast. Okay, getting ready to begin another fast, and I share that with you for a reason. I want more of God in my life. I want more of God. By being out in front of these churches, it, and I, and and I, I, I mean, I, I understand all this. I knew all. I would hear a lot of these things, but it makes me so sad when you when 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 you uh, hear what you hear, hear what I hear, and because I've done it quite a bit lately. And I need to do it more. I may take off a week or two from doing it. It's in the Lord's hands. 
because I plan on going on this fast, seeking more of, of God. I want more of God. I believe all true servants of God want more of God. I believe all true servants, those that are walking the narrow and straight way, hunger and thirst for more of the Lord. You know, Jesus said, Blessed are those that hunger and thirst after my righteousness, for they shall be filled. So this uh, going out in front of these churches has led me to going on another fast. And it may be, so help me God, the longest fast I've ever been on in my life. I, uh, I really need, and I'm determined right now, and I hope I don't give up to go as long as I can possibly go to have the, a new and greater encounter with the Lord than I've ever had in my life. You know, our Savior, the very beginning of His ministry, He went into the wilderness and fasted for 40 days. I'm 100% can say he had to do that. He had to do it. It was ordained from the Father that the Savior, which is, which is God in the flesh, lived as we live, ladies and gentlemen. we got to understand that. The Bible says He was tempted in every way as we are. I would say He was tempted more than you and I could ever be tempted. Because he, here's the Son of God. Okay. Here's like the Lord said, he could call legions of angels and destroy everyone when they come to take him to be to, to be crucified and etc. etc. I mean I mean God walking on the earth, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. But in the form of man, as the word says, tempted in all points, yet without sin. So he set an example for us, ladies and gentlemen. But anyway, I want to share up my heart a little bit before I get into these scriptures about sin. And people say, oh, well, if you say you don't have any sin in your life, you're a liar. And they, and, and they unrightly divide that scripture. Okay? And I'm going to get into that. We're going to get into that. Okay? It's very important. Okay? This is a serious problem okay, amongst believers and, and 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 so many and, and all these false preachers. Okay. But uh I had a man call me uh from Ohio. He heard me give my phone out to Barry on when I was out in front of this first in there United Methodist Church. And uh, he told me how he got my phone number through listening to the video. And he said, he said, Ray, it was, I get a little emotional because I love the Lord so much. And I love people. And I, and I live for God to use me. But I have to first make sure I'm obeying God. First and foremost. And he said, Ray, I got your phone number. I said, God led me to, God led me to your video and, the, and, the, and, and, the, and this phone number. So that's how, that's how I'm calling you. So we talked for a while and then we talked again on a couple other phone calls. But he shared something with me. Okay. He said, uh, First thing he started talking about was uh, he went to a Nazarene church, church, church of the Nazarenes, and uh, he said, "Ray, uh, in a Sunday school class, I'd shared something. I'm, I, I don't remember every exact word, but, but he said he had shared something about walking in perfection." 
striving for perfection. Okay. And that's scriptural. We're going to, I'm going to share some of these scriptures with you about that. The Lord wants me to do that. Okay. So, uh, this may take a while. But you know, I, I encourage you. You spend a lot of time doing a lot of other things. I, I, I hope I hope you'll listen to this entire message. If you have to come back to it. But uh, he said that the, the man leading the Sunday school class says we can't we can't walk uh, perfect before God. Uh, so, so so the Sunday school teacher was putting down what God had put in this man's heart with scripture, with scriptural proof. So he mentioned that to me and he was it really bothered him. Okay. Well the reason he mentioned that to me is you know he saw in the video where I was talking about so many of the harlot churches compromising, not preaching the narrow and straight way and without holiness no one shall see God. Because in the scripture it says, we're going to get into this, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Okay. But then he said something else that, that really, really broke my heart. I started crying right away. Okay. He said, Ray, he said, I got a son. His son is in like his second or third year of college. So I think he told me his son's like 21 years old. And his son told his wife, which is his son's mother, okay, mom and dad, this man that called me, him and his wife, you know, they've been married for quite a while. Uh, they have a business together. And this is their last son that's uh, still at home, but he's uh, the college break. I think he's got another year or two in college. But his son went to his mother and he found out. He told his mom he was effeminate. Okay. He was effeminate. Okay. This is, a, this is demonic. This is spreading like wildfire in this, in this country. Okay. We done, you know, it, it's done gone from, you know, all the sin compromising and in, 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 in believers in the church to, to perversion now, okay? Even though there's always been a little bit of perversion, but, you know, most everybody's, you know, they don't say much now about, you know, a person being gay and all, or, you know, that's kind of becoming normal. Uh... Uh, uh, and, and, and you know, to some more than others, but now we got the sex change stuff, and 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 and, and so many men becoming effeminate and, and 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 wanting to become a woman. So so this man told me that his son, 21 years old. Okay, now he didn't learn this from his son. He learned it. Through his wife, I think that's how he told me he learned it. It might even been somebody else in his family is how he learned it that his son had told that to his mother. So his son was talking to his mother, this man's wife, and shared that with her. And then this man says, And Ray, my wife told me. If if you get in the in the way with my son, I'm paraphrasing. I don't remember the exact words, but it, it basically meant this: his wife told him that if you get in the way and bother my son about this, it's going to be war. And man, when he told me that, I started crying. I didn't even know this man. This was like in the first minute or two of our conversation. Well, my heart was broken that 
that Satan is trying to convince this man, young man, these demons attacking his mind, and he's wanting to become a woman, and then his wife threatening him, and she, as this man said, she's, she claims to be a Christian. As I told this man, I'm said, I'm sorry. I won't mention his name, but uh, I know you don't want to hear this, and you might not agree with this. We just call this man, we just call this man's name Joe. Okay, that really wasn't his name. Okay, we're just gonna say Joe. So Joe, I know, I know you don't want to hear this, but, 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 your wife, she's not a true Christian. To tell you that if you get involved with your son, which you're the head of your home, it's going to be war. That that was demonic. And this is going on with a lot of women today, ladies and gentlemen. It's shocking to me. And this goes back to what, what we're going to get into with Scripture about sin in professing Christians' lives and in the church. Because these, these people go to church. My wife of 41 and a half years leaves me. And we wasn't even going to church at the time because I got I kind of got tired of trying to find one that preached a narrow and straight way. That, 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 that preached that and, and, and preached the fear of God in me. Okay. Which I have it in me, but I want I want to I want to be encouraged to, to keep it in me. Okay. I want to hear the whole truth. I don't want to be deceived. I don't want my ears tickled. Okay. I don't want to go to a church uh, that'll appease me. Okay. Uh, uh, but quite frankly, where where I am with God, the only way a church is going to get my approval is to preach the narrow and straight way and holiness, to put the fear of God in me, okay, to urge me, encourage me. Ray, you got to walk holy, man. The way's narrow and straight. I don't want my ears tickled. I don't want to deceive myself, and that's why I'm talking to you today. That's why I go out in front of these churches, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. That's where my heart is. Okay. Okay. That's the kind of person I choose to be. And I praise God for that. I praise God for all the love in my heart, the love that, that I would start crying. And then and then we we'll just like I said, we're gonna call him Joe. And then Joe started crying. I could tell his he was he started crying after I started crying. It's so sad what's going on in our country. Then a, as a young man, 21 years old, I think he said, that messaged me often, uh, literally like daily for probably the last week and a half. Okay. He's, he, he got my phone number off of one of the videos and he's not ready to totally surrender everything to God. He's searching, he's seeking. And he said he'd give up he'd give up alcohol and marijuana. But he wasn't ready to give up pornography. And, 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 and masturbating from the pornography. In other words, imagining sin in your mind to masturbate. So I give him some good tough scriptures on that. Uh, Jesus said, if your eye offends you, he's talking about, see so many people, ladies and gentlemen, they think, you hear you hear these people say to me, love, love, love. I'm out there just quoting Jesus' words, and they say, don't sound like love, don't sound like love. Okay. And then one of the videos, the Lord hit me, and you'll hear me start saying, 
Well, ladies and gentlemen, I can tell you right now, God, God loves everybody that went to hell. Okay, He went. He, he, he loved us. He sent His only begotten Son. Okay, They believed, but they didn't repent. So they didn't obey. As Jesus said, He that hears these sayings, plural, of mine and does them. So they were deceived. The preachers deceived them like I was once deceived. So they believed, man. They are wear the shirts. Like you see the one guy in the video that's supposedly an image of Jesus with the crown of thorns on his head, which which I don't even agree with that because we really truly don't know exactly what our Savior looked like. That could be Zeus or some false god. Okay. So I, I, I see all that. Clearly the Holy Spirit in me would never do that because because that could be a graven image. That, that could be a a picture that we always imagine because we've seen it all of our lives of what what our Savior is supposed to look like. When yet, like at the Vatican, uh, they have a, a a statue of Peter, but it's been they've admitted it's really not Peter. It's like uh. Uh, the image of the god Jupiter Jupiter something like that so anyway one of the ten commandments is, 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 is don't, don't create anything as in heaven on the earth and the earth and the sea etc etc and God has reasons for that okay. but anyway uh, but Jesus talking about lust and pornography ladies and gentlemen my wife has been gone from me since think about it now I'm married for 41 and a half years November the 13th 2021 and then she filed for divorce a couple months later So you're looking at a man, I mean, I have to be honest with you, I'm an alpha male. I love having sex with my wife. Okay? I love I, I love pleasing a woman. Okay? I, I'm not, I'm not, I don't know that I'm like a lot of men, they, they want to be pleased sexually. Well, I mean, I do, but I, 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 I enjoy more so pleasing my wife sexually. And, uh, but this man, at different times, Satan will attack me. Okay. Now I'm not going to mention the the young man's name in Florida, but I won't. I won't. He, most likely, he, he's going to watch this video. And but all of you having problems with lust and pornography. Imagine if you were married for 41 and a half years, and and you really enjoyed having sex and pleasing your wife etc many times quite a few times anyway for sure you know my wife would say I like to have sex too much and now two years and nine and a half months I haven't had sex ladies and gentlemen don't you think that Satan hadn't tempted me I've been on the fast a few times well, quite a few fasts since she's left, and a couple, of, a couple of those fasts, I went on because of Satan attacking my mind with 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 a uh, with a uh, with lust. Okay, and the word says, take it, take captive of all the, all of your thoughts. So Satan's attacking me with this. You know, like you see all these lewd women. You see me have put these videos up about the these women walking around in their extra thick pantyhose called leggings and yoga pants and and so many of these women now you know I, I, I like to watch the news and mo most news people are women okay women are taking over everything basically we got a bunch of sissy coward men okay uh 
encourage you to watch some of my videos about that. I love women. Okay. If if if, if I lived after the flesh, okay, my greatest weakness, if I lived after the flesh, man, I'd be out here trying to have sex with, with, with pretty women. Okay. That's the way I was before I got truly born again. Okay. I ripped up the pornography magazine, never never bought another one. Uh and just another reason I'm going on this fast coming up for for the main reason to have the greatest encounter with the Lord I've ever had. There's quite a few good reasons why I'm doing getting ready to do this. Okay. But uh one of those reasons is man, Satan's attacked me more than ever since my wife has left me about just seeing a woman on the news and you know she's got all that makeup so many of these women that got all that red why does a woman want to draw attention to her lips i mean that's sexual ladies and gentlemen okay and these women know this they want to look sexy to you Okay. They want you to watch their news. They want you to be attracted to them. Man, I'm going to watch her because she's, she's pretty. She's, she's sexy. Okay. All these different things go through the minds of these women. Okay. And some of them, you know, they just want to look sexy. Okay. They're not happy with the way God made them okay, without painting their face. Okay. Uh, 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 most, most of these women... Are, are pretty they don't need to put on all the makeup okay but they do it anyway okay and uh but satan's just been attacking me i you know i want i i want a wife i still love my wife that's left me it's that it showed no no remorse no sorrow never admitted she broke her vows or treated me in an unloving way but I still love her I still hope that God could put us back together but it's in God's hands but I want a wife man okay I'm an alpha male like I say I'm not going to look at pornography Satan just told me in the in 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 the last few days why don't you do that? I'm not going to do it, ladies and gentlemen. I love God. I love God with all my heart, mind, and soul. I'm not going to do it. Okay? I'm not going to do it. And because it, because he's been... It's like the demonic spirits in the air. Okay? And, and here's another thing. It seems like the more you do, when, like me going out in front of these churches, and Satan, it makes Satan angry. Okay? And that's what I love. I, I love making him angry. Okay, but you got to put on the whole armor, like the word says, the whole armor, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness. You know, I might have it mixed up a little bit. Uh, uh, the shield of faith, the sword, which is the word, etc., etc. And uh, and uh, uh, so I. That's another reason I'm 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 gonna be doing this fasting. Cause it's like a great greater attack than ever about about lust in my life. Okay. And and I just and I want a godly wife. I want I, you know, I see a husband and a wife. And so many times it makes me like, man, I wish I had a godly wife. You know. A friend. You know, I don't get out much, ladies and gentlemen. Never, ha never have in my life. Okay. And uh, I'm, I've even thought, do I need to go to one of these harlot churches, one of these big churches, to find a find a wife? God won't let me do it, and I don't want to do it. But the thought goes through my mind. And I don't want to find another wife. I, I want, I want my, my wife and I to reconcile. It's such a horrible witness to my sons. And 
she's made me look bad to a lot of people. Like, why would she leave me? You know, they would say, why would she leave Ray? Okay. So, so they just automatically think I'm a bad guy, which my crime, my fault, is basically in a nutshell being too into God. Being too into God, warning my sons, you know, you need to live holy, you need to dress holy. And the, and the one in particular that Satan's used so much for a long time. And I love him. I love him so much. And Satan's used him so much to divide me and my wife. And she loves she loves my sons, not just her sons, not just our sons, my sons. Okay. More than me and more than God. Because because I don't want to celebrate my son's sinful lifestyle. He wants me to be a part of his life. Well, really, he wants me to be a part of my grandson's life. But in order to be a part of my grandson's life, I have to see my son. My son's always, always, always welcome to come see me. Always. I would love it. I'd love it. All of my sons. Okay. Never would I refuse my son. But I'm not going to fellowship. I'm not. I've t God, the Holy Spirit have, says have no fellowship. So this is a conviction I have. My wife should just honor my convictions. I've told her, you can go see my son anytime, whatever. Uh, uh, you know, I'm not going to go see my son while he's shacking up, living in sin. Okay, uh, 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 he, he's welcome to come see me. Uh, and uh, but he don't want to do that anyway because I've, I've I've asked him multiple times. No, I might share the Lord with his girlfriend. She might decide to give her life to Jesus and quit fornicating, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I want to feel comfortable to share with my grandson about the Lord with him, even as a little baby, even as a little old tiny boy. Just talk to him about the Lord, even though his little mind might not comprehend it that much. And uh, uh, and be who God made me to be. But I can't. I don't feel comfortable talking to my grandson about like, like that because I. Because I know, I know that's not the life his dad and his mother live. So anyway, okay, getting off subject a little bit, but I'm sharing my heart with you, okay. But I started crying when Joe was telling me about his wife, saying it's going to be war, and I said, Joe, I can I can relate. I can relate to issues with the wife. And the Lord literally spoke to me and gave me some things to share with Joe 100% that God told me to tell him. And I hope he does those things. I hadn't heard back from him yet. But uh, anyway, uh, a lot of sin out there. But here's the bottom line, ladies and gentlemen. Do you love, do you really truly love God? Because if you do, you're going to hate sin. So let's get into scripture now. Okay. Let's get into some scripture about sin. Okay. Now we know in scripture, if you don't know, scripture says, for we have all sin and come short of the glory of God. Now the word have is a past tense word, ladies and gentlemen. It doesn't say we do all sin. Okay? There's a big difference. Okay? I was born in sin because of the sin of Adam and Eve. I've committed many sins. in my life before I totally surrendered my life to God. 
as a believer being deceived by the false preachers, I committed a lot of sin. I was never told I had to live holy, man, and lay all my sin down. That's why most so-called Christians have sin in their life, some more than others. And willful sin, that's, that's the most scary part about it. Because the Bible says in Hebrews 10, 26 through 30, there's, there remains no more forgiveness for willful sin. Okay, The Lord knows if it was willful, there's no forgiveness until you're ready to strive with all your heart, mind, soul, and body, which is the greatest commandment, to never do it again. Like the Lord told the adulterous woman, go and sin no more. Okay. The Bible says, repent and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. Okay. In other words, if we don't repent and be converted, then our sins ain't going to be blotted out, ladies and gentlemen. Our sins ain't going to be blotted out until we repent. means we, we come to the point where we're going to stop doing it. Okay. Now the Word says, okay, and we're going, we're going, I'm going to give you some more scriptures about this. Okay. I got a little link pulled up here to help me out, make it easy to find. some scriptures about sin. And I'm going to go to open my Bible up. We're going to go to the book of 1 John. 1 John is very powerful. Very, very powerful book. And this is this. I, I want you to listen to this now. This is the King James Version. Okay. I'm going to start reading with verse 6. 1 John 1 6. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, how, what does it mean to walk in darkness? It means to walk in sin. Sin is darkness. That's very clear in Scripture. Okay. If we say that we have fellowship with Him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. Alright, then verse 7. But if we walk in the light as He is in the light, key words, but if we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. So if we don't walk in the light, in other words, if we don't stop sinning, okay, and we're still walking in darkness, then the blood of Jesus has not cleansed us from all sin. Okay, That's what it means. Okay, So it says, but if we walk in the light as He is in the light, But if, key words, ladies and gentlemen, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, clean, uh, the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Now listen to verse 8. This is where they unrightly divide the word and misinterpret and twist it. Okay? And you may be one of these and I hope I will teach you to stop doing that. And the Holy Spirit will use me to teach you to do, stop doing that. So verse 8, I'm, I'm going to read it as it says, as it's translated. Okay. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Okay. All right. Now, Let's read on. We're going to get back to that. Verse 9, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us for our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Okay? And that is, if we confess them with true repentance. The Word says godly sorrow. Bring, in other words, we're going to stop willfully sinning and we're going to do like Jesus said, Strive to enter in, love Him with all your heart, all your mind, go and sin no more. 
was, if that's what we're going to do, then the then His blood will cleanse us and forgive us. Okay. All right. Then verse ten. If we say that we have not sinned, okay. Now here it says. Instead of saying if we say we have no sin, it says if we say that we have not sin, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Okay. Now, that's the way it should have been translated in verse 8. You say, well, how do you know that, uh, Brother Ray, Brother Nix? Well, I'm going to show you because we're going to keep on reading. Okay. And we're going to go to Strong's Concordance. Understand that the King James Bible is not perfect. Okay, it, it wasn't breathed. The English King James Bible wasn't breathed out of the mouth of God. Okay, all right. Uh, uh, so every trend, every translation is is, is 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 not as accurate as it could be, because we're just reading right here. We, I mean, the Scripture itself explains that in many places. If we keep on reading, okay. Scripture don't contradict itself. But if we don't know all of it, we, we, we will think that it does. Okay, That's why we're commanded in Timothy to study the Word of God. To show ourselves approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the Word of truth. So if we don't study it, and we just, oh, well, we read this Scripture... So you'll hear that, hear them people out in front of that Presbyterian church and places many times out here. Oh, well, if they'll say, well, do you have any sin in your life? I say, not that I know of. And I'm being perfectly honest. Okay, I'm telling you right now. That I know of, I don't have any sin in my life. There's not a sin that I have a problem with. Okay, all right? Uh, now, if I let my flesh take over, I'd have a lot of sin in my life. You know, I'd be going to one of these harlot churches or a bunch of them and finding me a beautiful woman to lay with since I hadn't had sex in two two years and nine months, right? And I could just, I could let myself be deceived by the false preachers. Say, oh, you know, you'll still go to heaven, Ray. You know, you just won't be rewarded. You'll have to answer to God for your, you know, for your uh, fornication, you know, your sex outside of marriage, but, but you'll still get there. All this poison out there. So that's why most Believers have got sin in their life. Okay, they 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 can't understand how you can live without sin in your life. And most preachers don't. They've been deceived. Like that Presbyterian preacher. If you go back and listen to that video, he 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 accused me of preaching heresy. Okay, that I said I didn't have any known sin in my life, and that I do not willfully sin. Why is that so hard to understand? And I'm going to give you some more scriptures to prove that's scriptural. It's not hearsay. He's the man that preaches hearsay. You know, it's just the opposite. Okay? And it reminds me so much of like in, in the political world of Democrats saying, oh, you know, they, you a hater, you a hater. Yet they hate true Christians, right? Okay? Because, because well, a true Christian preaches against sin. Okay? And against LGBTQ, etc. And uh, uh, so I'm, you know, so I've been called, you know, a hater. Okay, all right. But the truth is, I'm I'm a true lover of these people's souls. Okay. So let's go to Strong's Concordance in verse eight, where it says, "If we say that we have no sin," yet in verse. 10 it says if we say that we have not sin we a liar all right so if you go to where it says where in verse 8 where we have no sin and you go to strong's concordance okay in strong's concordance it, it's greek and latin most uh tr scripture in in the new testament is, is is translated from the greek and the uh old covenant is is, is translated from the hebrew Okay, so in strong concordance, the word there where it says he that has says he has no sin, the word no in Greek is spelled O U. Okay, O U. Okay, and 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 and, and the definition of O U, I'm I'm looking on Strong's concordance. The top definition is is the word not. Okay, 
In other words, he that says he has not sinned, okay, which is what it says in verse 10. Okay. Alright. Another definition in strong concordance is nowhere. In other words, somebody says he is nowhere, nowhere in his life is he sinned. Okay. Alright. Uh another definition in, in strong concordance is for in no manner. I mean, in other words, for in he that says it for in no manner he is, has never sinned. Okay. Alright. And uh and another definition instead of he that says in, in strong concordance instead of it, it, it says the definition where the King James says no in strong concordance it says not nowhere never okay that's another definition okay so you say well how do you know that well we I, I just shared with you what it says in strong concordance and then we're going to keep reading okay which is going to be another witness okay uh, of how people unrightly divide the word okay and, and, and use it to try to justify sin in their life okay and that's the main reason they use this scripture and unrightly divide it okay so in chapter 2 John says my little children these things write I unto you that you sin not Oh man, that ain't possible. To most Christians, man, don't. Oh, that ain't possible. No, that ain't possible. Really? Then why did Jesus say, if you love me, you will keep my commandments? Plural. Commandments. Plural. Okay. He that hears these sayings of mine and does them. If you keep my words, plural. Okay. He it is that loves me, and I'll manifest myself to him. I will we will come and do and make our home in him. Jesus said, Be ye holy, for I am holy. Okay. So John says here, understand now, we just read in, in chapter one, where rightfully interpreting it, it says, if we say that we have not sinned or never sinned, okay, which I don't claim to that I've never sinned. I'd be a liar if I'd ever said that. Okay? Alright? But I don't have sin in my life. Okay? Right now. And for for a long, long time, I haven't had sin in my life. A true man of God, and we're going to get into Scripture and prove this. Okay? We're not supposed to have sin in our life, ladies and gentlemen. If you got sin in your life, you need to get it out of your life. Don't be seduced and deceived by the false preachers and by unrightly... As I always say, as most people know just enough about the Bible to get them in trouble, okay? Because they they pick and choose and unrightly divide and deceive themselves with it, okay? And that's what Satan wants. That's why he's, Satan knows the Word of God, and he's got a lot of you, you know. There's so much deception out there, ladies and gentlemen. Jesus said, "In the last days, many false Christs and prophets or preachers shall arise." and shall deceive many key word ladies and gentlemen many and listen he said and if it were possible the very elect could be deceived so there's going to be there is a lot of deception ladies and gentlemen and it's going to get worse when satan starts working miracles i mean real true miracles in so many of these false churches it is probably already going on in different places and will get more deception so with the with with the miracles that Satan's going to do, the wonders, lying wonders, okay, Bible says it talks about this, okay. It, it, don't believe Satan can't do miracles, okay. Moses threw his rod down; it turned into serpents. The 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 the, the, the false prophets, the magicians slash sorcerers, threw their rod down, and it turned into serpents. Okay, uh, God sent plagues, and the and the magicians and the sorcerers was able to send plagues okay but god's god's serpent ate up the, the devil's serpents etc etc okay okay so satan's got counterfeits okay but he's not as powerful as god is but he's got some power okay so when we go on to read uh my little children these things right out unto you that you sin not so paul 
so John is saying here, I write these things that you sin not. Oh no, but 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 we're going to take what he said and unrightly divide it over there just a few verses ahead in, in 1 8. He says we we we, we gotta we're gonna have sin in our life. If we say that we don't have sin in our life, we're a liar. No, he's saying if you say you have not or never sinned. Okay. Alright. So he says, I write these things to you that you sin not. So if he didn't believe that was possible, why would he say that? Okay. Why would he say that? And we're gonna keep on reading. I'm not I'm not done yet. This isn't this is a really good study, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. So then he goes on and says, And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, if. Okay. So if, if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, which is Jesus Christ the righteous. Alright? Then he goes on, verse 3. Hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. Plural. He that says, I know him and keepeth not his commandments, plural, is a liar. And the truth, that scripture is on the back of this RV I'm sitting in. Right on the back when you drive up behind this RV, there's a lot of things on there, but right at eye level, okay, it's, I, I got that scripture that says, He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. That was powerful. That's, that's telling it like it is, ladies and gentlemen. Okay? Alright, then it goes on, ladies and gentlemen, verse 6. He that says he abides in him ought himself also so to walk, even as he walked. How did he walk? Well, John knows. We know if we study the Word, he walked without sin. He was a man like we are, tempted, at, I say in not just all points, but more points than we could ever be tempted in, I believe. Okay? And uh, uh, do, do you not think our Savior was tempted with, with women? Can you imagine all the beautiful women that hung around hung around him? Okay. Alright. But he didn't give in to sin. So, Regnix, I'm determined I'm not going to give in to, to the sin of sexual immorality. Okay. Through the power of God and my obedience, I won't. That's what Scripture teaches. And through my love for God, I won't. It's common sense, ladies and gentlemen. I tell people all the time. I say, uh, if you love me, you won't lie to me, right? They say, yeah, that's right. If you love me, you won't steal from me, right? That's right. I say, well, don't that, that makes sense, right? They say, yeah, I agree. So the bottom line is, if you love me, you're not, you're not going to have any problems doing these things. That, that you know I would be the opposite of love. Like, I could tell Vicky, Vicky, if you truly love me, your husband, you won't walk away from me. I've told her that. She showed no acknowledgement of that, that you're right, or because of her pride and her stubbornness. It's, it's so sad. It's so sad. It's like, it's like all these women leaving their husbands and like like my best friend that owns this well I, I don't know I'd say my best friend but he's a good friend that owns this trailer park that my RV's sitting in right now he's been trying to get his wife to homeschool his three sons for years she won't do it she won't do it she will not obey her husband man that ain't love I mean I I hope she listens to this video. I hope my friend lets her listen to this video. Okay. I'm, I'm tired of this. I'm, I'm going to speak the truth. If you hate me and I'm persecuted for it, so, so be it. I've currently lost my wife for doing so. Okay. But she won't homeschool. She's a teacher. My friend's wife is a teacher. She teaches in a in a harlot school that says it's by faith alone. Okay. 
Bob Jones University. In this case, on campus, the university, but but they have a elementary school and a high school. She teaches in the in the elementary school of Bob Jones University, which my my friend should have never and, and never let her do that. But oh well, he'll have to answer to God for that. But she should be homeschooling her and teaching her own children at home. But she, but she won't obey her husband. But she claims to be a Christian. Ladies and gentlemen, according to the Bible, she's living in sin. Along with, like, my wife and this woman that says, this is war if you, if you, if, if, if you try to get in between her and their son about him saying he wants to, he's a feminine and he wants to become a woman. That is so unloving. That's, that's so vow-breaking. But these people are delusional. I'm speaking my heart to you, ladies and gentlemen. Do you want to lie to yourself? If you're one of those people that say you're a Christian and you got sin in your life, you got to get it out. you got to get it out. And we're going to read on what's going to happen if we don't. Okay? But she won't homeschool her own children, but she'll teach other children. She believes she's a Christian. Willfully sinning. This is called willful sin. This, according to scripture, she's living in willful sin until until she obeys her husband. According to the Bible, according to my Bible, not according to Ray Nick, she'd go to hell. She has willful sin in her life. The Bible says if we sin willfully after we receive the knowledge of the truth, she knows in the word it says to obey her husband. It says it in Ephesians 5, obey, wives obey your husbands as unto the Lord and in everything. But most women today, man, they, they the heck with that. Oh, it's this this Jesus of love, this made up Jesus in their mind. Okay, this sugar daddy Jesus in their mind. Okay, delusional. Did you know it says in your Bible? You you'll hear me say this sometimes out in front of these churches. It says because they rejected the love of the truth. What is the truth? The Word is the truth. Jesus is the truth. His Word is the truth. Okay. So when, 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 when you know it says something in the Word, which is the truth, and you're not doing it, okay? It says, because they rejected the love of the truth. In other words, they didn't love the truth. They rejected the love of the truth. God says He'll turn them over to strong delusion to believe a lie. Do you want the Lord to turn you over to strong delusion to believe a lie? That's scary. That's that's hell there, ladies and gentlemen. That's eternal damnation where the fire is never quenched and the worm dieth not. So you need to stop rejecting the love of the truth like Brother Nix that I'm sharing with you that you've got to live holy. The Bible says without holiness no one shall see God. We're going to get into those scriptures. Okay. This is heaven and hell. This is eternity. This is serious. This is not a joking matter. You hear me say when I go out preaching, sin is such a big deal to Jesus. He said it'd be better if you just pluck your eye out or, or, or cut your hand off or, or your leg and enter life with one hand or one arm, one leg, uh, 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 than to go to hell with both. Oh, no. Jesus is love. Jesus is don't be delusional. As you'll hear me say, Jesus said in John chapter 15, If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love. Even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love. If. Okay. It says in Proverbs, I think it's Proverbs, God hateth all workers of iniquity sin okay. he loved us that he would sin his savior if we believe and repent 
then we could receive the Holy Spirit. We could be endued with power from on high. Okay? And walk as He walked. The Bible says walk as He walked. Alright, so then we go on now. Okay? He that saith he abideth in him ought himself also to walk even as he walked. Now let's go over to, to, uh, to chapter 3. Little, this is chapter 3, verse 7. Remember what we've already read now that John said in, 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 in the scriptures we've already went through. He that says he has not sinned is a liar. Then he's telling us, I write these things to you that you sin not. Okay? And if you say you've never sinned, you're a liar. Okay? Don't say if you say you have no sin in your life as, as, he, as a true born again Christian. He's going to go on and tell us, you better not have. So, chapter 3, verse 7, Little children, let no man deceive you. In other words, don't let me, Ray Nix, deceive you. Don't let your preacher deceive you. Don't let the false Christian or anyone deceive you. Okay? This is this deception that God has taught me from growing up hearing the false gospel. Okay? Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. Verse 8, He that committeth sin is of the devil. He that committeth sin is of the devil. So, Okay, so we, we want to unrightly divide John's words that he just spoke about 25 verses before. Okay? Where if you want to unrightly pluck it out and unrightly divide it, okay, and twist it to believe he that says he has no sin in his life, when it, when it really means he that says he's never sinned or has not sinned. So he tells us he writes these things that we that, that we may not. So evidently that's possible that, that, that we don't sin. Then he says, he that says he abides in him ought to walk as he walked. So we know he walked without sin. The Bible's clear about that. Then he says, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. He that committeth sin is of the devil. For the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. So through 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 the Son of Man, through Christ, if we if, if we believe and repent, he destroys the sin in our life. Then if we sin, at some point in getting along the way after we've been truly born again if we sin and it's not willful sin then he will forgive us as he says we have an advocate with the father but it can't be willful sin we have to stop willfully sinning scripture says that in Hebrews 10 there, there remains no more sacrifice or forgiveness for sins if we sin willfully we counted the blood of the covenant an unholy thing and in and, 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 and the salt of the Spirit of grace. Okay? Count of the blood of the covenant whereby we was sanctified. In other words, you, you willfully sinning, you're no longer sanctified or holy. The word sanctified means holy. Set apart. You're no longer set apart. It includes me if we, if, if we willfully sin. Okay? So he says, He that committed sin is of the devil. Oh, no! Oh, you hear him say, oh no, we all have sin in our life. Oh well, that means we're all of the devil, right? So we're all doomed for hell according to that interpretation. Which is which is which is nonsense. That's hearsay. Okay. Then verse 10, in this the children of God are made manifest, and the children of the devil, whosoever doeth not righteous is not of God, neither he that neither he that loveth not his brother. 
In other words, we don't love. If you don't love your husband or wife, like the scripture teaches, then according to the Bible, you can say you say it all you want to, but God's word says right here, you're a liar. If you don't love others the way you want to be loved, you're a liar. Okay? Then I want to get to this. We go on. First John. Chapter 5, verse 18. We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not. Okay? That's the same John right here in the book of 1 John. For we know that whosoever is born of God, in other words, born again. I've, I've, I've believed and repented, turned from my sin. I'm born of God. I'm born again born of the spirit comes into me because I surrendered everything and turned from my sin so as Jesus promised in John 14 if you love me you'll keep my commandments and my father will love you we will come unto you make our home in you manifest ourselves to you so John says we know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not but he that is begotten of God King James says keepeth himself Another definition is guards himself. Okay? So he that is born of God guards himself, and the wicked one touches him not. Yeah. We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not. So is John contradicting himself? He, he says he he that says he has no sin, then yet here he says he that's born of God does not sin. You see how these people will try to because of their ignorance and are there are they knowingly unrightly dividing the word of God to try to justify their sin so I've explained that part to you I've given you a good teaching and a good understanding I could give you many more scriptures okay okay but just in what John said and how they unrightly divide the word properly translated and understood put into context with all of scripture and even what John went on to say Okay. He says he, he that says he has not or never sinned is a liar. Not he that says he has no sin in his life. Okay. Because we're, we're commanded to live that way now. When we come to Christ, we're supposed to repent and get the sin out. Okay. The narrow and straight way. That's the narrow and straight way in future be to find it. Okay. Paul said, ladies and gentlemen, to be carnally minded is death. Okay. You cannot get high off of alcohol or drugs or your prescription drugs, okay? Like so many's on these antidepressants, uh, mind altering drugs. They alter your mind, okay? Uh, uh, the word says, "Be sober. Let the same mind be in it." It was in Jesus Christ, like John said, "There walk as He walked." Uh, 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 so we got all these scriptures, okay? Uh, so the bottom line is we got to live holy now let's get into some more let's get into another scripture that's unrightly divided and abused okay okay they say uh, when I went out in front of Calvary Church you watch one of those videos you'll hear a guy say well the Bible says there's none righteous okay alright so let's look at that Let's look at that. Okay, in Romans, okay, it's a scripture. Romans 3:10. There's none who there's none who does good, not even one. Okay. Uh there's none that understandeth. There's none that seeketh after God. Okay. So so Paul is writing, he's talking about the world, and he's talking about Gentiles. You know the word Gentile means sinners? That's what the word means, actually, if you look it up. So he says, as it is written, there's none righteous, no, not one. There's none that understandeth, there's none that seeketh after God. 
So, so they'll take that scripture and try to justify their sin. Okay? Just like they'll take the scripture that says, oh, and unrightly divide it and say, oh, we, if we say we don't have any sin in our life, we're a liar. Now, we just went through that. Now we're going to go through this scripture. This is important. This is very important. Okay? Uh, 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 so, there's none righteous, no, not one. There's none that understandeth. There's none that seeketh after God. Okay. He's talking about the world. You say, well, how do you know that, Brother Nix? Let's keep on reading the Word. Alright? So let's go to Let's go to some scriptures. Let's go to some scriptures about uh, righteousness. Okay, I'm gonna use this these scriptures right here on my that I got on my laptop. Okay, I'll read you some scriptures. These are that's in Proverbs. I'm gonna give you a New Testament scripture. Jesus said, I come not to call the righteous unto repentance, but the sinners. Okay, well, we just read where where where, where Paul says there's none righteous, there's not even none that seeketh after God. Well, he's talking about the world and 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 in a specific time frame. Oh, but I'm going to take that man and I'm going to justify my, my unrighteousness. I'm going to justify my sin. Okay. Delusional. I've heard the preachers, the, the, the tickle your ear preachers, man, I've heard them quote it. They'll quote the scripture like, uh, your righteousness is like filthy rags unto God. In other words, you don't have to be righteous. Okay. You don't have to be righteous. Well, my righteousness, okay, in the sense of, uh, here's an example of what Scripture's trying to teach. There's a lot of people that don't even believe in Jesus. Okay, they 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 have righteousness in their life, but because they haven't accepted the Son of God as their Savior and 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 to be forgiven for their original sin and and, and I'm sure sins they've committed in their life up until that point. Like, if, if he says he's never sinned, he's a liar. Okay. Uh, and like, God told Ezekiel, tell the righteous man. Listen now, tell the righteous man. So there's, there's righteous people. You see how, how, how you put the scripture together? Tell the righteous man if he will continue in his righteousness. It actually says if he will continue in his righteousness. Okay. He shall live thereby, but it, but if he turns from his righteousness and commits iniquity, he shall die thereby, and I will rem remember none of the righteousness which he has committed. He said, tell, Ezekiel, tell the wicked man if he'll turn from all his wicked ways and do that which is right, he shall live thereby, and I will remember none of the None of the unrighteousness or wickedness which he has committed, and he shall live there. But if you don't tell him that, Ezekiel, I'll hold their blood on your hands. Okay? That's tough words right there. So God telling Ezekiel, you, 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 you be the watchman, you preach this. It's like God's called me to do. Or, 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 or he may be calling you to do. Okay? Uh, he may be calling you to get out in front of these hard. It's a, it's a great place to go. It's like, well, where do I go if I want to get out and share the word? Go in front of one of these harlot churches. They're all over the place. They're all over the place. Bear fruit for your Lord and Savior. Warn, warn, your, warn the fellow believers. Okay. Warn the people. Show them enough love to warn them. Get out of your comfort zone. Bear fruit for the Lord. He likes fruit. He says if you don't, me and you don't bear fruit for him, he'll cut you down. No value to him. Cast us into outer darkness. It means eternal damnation, ladies and gentlemen. 
we got to bear fruit. Okay. And there's different types of fruit. Okay. So, in Matthew chapter 5, Jesus said, Whosoever therefore breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches men so shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever does and teaches them, he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. But I say unto you that unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Okay? All right? 2 Timothy 3.16 All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Okay? All right? Now, I like what James said. Okay? I'm going to read some more of those scriptures, but they don't even mention these. Okay? But I'm going to mention them. Okay? In the book of James, this is how you rightly divide the word. Now, remember how you can unrightly divide the word and so many do and oh there's no unrighteous no not one you'll hear this okay all right unrightly dividing the word to justify sin in their life okay in the book of James the book of James it says Hold on a minute. 5.15 James 5.16 says, Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that you may be healed. Listen now. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man. Oh, but Brother Ray, we read... Uh, you, you know, we, I've been made to believe by the false preachers as none righteous. So, oh, I've, I've read that. I'm going to use that to justif justify my, my sin and my carnality. Well, you, you're, 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 you're misinterpreting and unrightly dividing the word. Okay? Put it into context with the rest of the word. Okay? Confess your faults one to another. Pray one for another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much think about that think about that all right and then we read uh in scripture it says for the eyes of the lord are on the righteous for the eyes of the lord are on the righteous and his ears are open to their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Okay? So there must be righteous people. There must be people that really are seeking after God. Like it says, there's none righteous, no not one, no one that seeketh after God. It's talking about a, a, a group of people. It's not talking about forever and all the people in the world forever forever on okay so you understand D do you understand i hope so okay fervent prayer of a righteous person veileth much come not to call the righteous jesus also said Ex except your righteousness sees the righteous scribes of the pharisees okay first corinthians fifteen thirty four. awake to righteousness and do not sin Oh, well, there's another good scripture right there, right? Talking about how they, the, the previous lesson on, oh, you said you have no sin, you're a liar. No, it means if you say you've never sinned or have not sinned. Okay? Paul says in Corinthians, awake to righteous and do not sin. For some do not have the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. Okay? Yeah, Paul went on. He, he said in, uh, uh, Romans, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. He said to be carnally minded is death. In other words, that's sin. Just to have a carnal worldly mind. 
your minds on the world, whether it's sports or or, or making money or or uh, you know whining and dining or just your job or or the cares of this world. You know the Bible says like the seed that fell on thorny ground, the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches came in and choked the word. The word was in them, but it got choked out. Because the carnal mind, the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches came in and choked the word and brought forth no fruit suitable for repentance or acceptable for repentance. Okay. Here's, a, here's another great scripture, Acts 10, 34 and 35. Peter opened his mouth and said, In truth I perceive that God shows no partiality, but in every nation whoever fears Him and works righteousness is accepted by Him. Okay? Like we read in 1 John 3, 10, In this the children of God and the children of the devil are made manifest. Whosoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, well, King James says, whosoever does not righteousness, okay? Some of these versions compromise it. Nor is he who does not love his brother. Titus 2.12 teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly, worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously. We should live soberly and righteously and godly in this present age. Titus 2.12 Jesus said, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. I love this scripture. Romans 6.16 Paul says, do you, not, do you not know that to whom you present yourselves slaves to obey? You are that one slaves whom you obey. In other words, if, 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 if you or I obey sin, then we are slave to sin. So, we're, we're slave to the devil. Okay. So do you not know that to whom you present yourselves slaves to obey, you are not that one's... You are that one's slaves whom you obey, whether of sin leading to death or of obedience. Oh no, there's no works involved in salvation, Ray. We, you know, listen to a lot of my videos, talk about all that. Or, uh, or of obedience leading to righteousness. I'll read that without interruption. Do you not do you not know that to whom you present yourselves or yield yourselves slaves to obey or servants to obey? You are that one servants to whom you obey, whether of sin leading to death or of obedience leading to righteousness. Romans 6, 16. Hebrews 5, 9 says, The Lord is the author of eternal salvation to all them that obey Him. Okay. As we read in 1 John, He that committed sin is of the devil. To walk as He walked. Uh, as it says in 1 John, He that's born of God does not commit sin because He guards Himself from the righteous one. Okay. And the wicked one touches Him not. Okay. So, so there you go. There's, there's a lot more scriptures. Okay. You read some more. Matthew thirteen forty three says the righteous will shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Matthew 25, 46, our Savior said this, ladies and gentlemen, and these things, no, he says, and, and these will go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. But the righteous to eternal life. Hebrews 1, 9 says, you, you have loved righteousness and hated lawlessness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness more than your companion. There's, there's many more scriptures about that. So, so we got to live holy. 
Okay, we got to get the sin in our life. We got to walk as He walked. So I've shared with you two scriptures that are so unrightly divided to try to justify sin in people's lives and showed you how the Bible can, scriptures can be unrightly divided and in, in this one case unrightly interpreted okay or really in both cases as well okay all right and there's many other cases as I have a lot of that a lot of videos about how you got to not just believe you got to repent and turn from sin you got to be obedient okay uh, you got to abide even Jesus said even if you continue in my word you are my disciples indeed so we got to continue we got to endure to the end okay all right oh uh, and, and and then you know we got so many lewd women in America claim to be Christians and not being holy yet the Bible says to live holy I want to talk about holiness now okay I want to talk about holiness now okay the Bible says, Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father, which is in heaven, is perfect. Okay? That's talking about holiness and righteousness. Okay? I like what this person says. No, no Christian worthy of the name will be satisfied to be less than perfect. And this reminds me of my, my brother that called me up. And, and told me, you know, what his wife said, that there was going to be war. Uh, you know, I, I said we would call his name Joe. So Joe was being persecuted by his wife. Okay. All right. And threatened by his own wife that claims to be a Christian. Okay. Uh, uh, if she got in between... And, and basically preaching to their son and warning him son God made you a man you need to be a man you need to rebuke the demons it's telling you you want to be a woman or you, you are a woman etc when you when you, you are, you're you're not okay uh, 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 and Joe's wife saying it's going to be war if you get in, get, get you know get involved in this and cause division okay all right reminds me of my wife reminds me of my friend's wife my friend even saying she said she's gonna leave me okay my, my friends you know not only has he been for years trying to get her to homeschool his own three their own three children instead she chooses to teach other children at another school Okay, and teach in a school that preaches and teaches heresy that it's faith alone and you don't have to live holy and be obedient to be saved. Okay. And, and, and threatens to leave him. Okay. Threatens to leave him at different times. It's unbelievable stuff going on. Okay. So let's look at. Uh, and, and Joseph, you know, mentioning, he brought up that, you know, we're supposed to strive for perfection and live perfect before God and the Sunday school teacher. Putting that down? Tickling people's ears and put, putting that down? Now let's look at some scripture about that. God considered Job a perfect man. Yeah, he considered Job a perfect man. Job 42, 6. But when Satan accused Job before the Lord, God himself declared. God told Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth? You know, this is the narrow and straight way, right? Even back in the day. God says, Has thou not considered my servant Job that there's none like him in the earth? A perfect and an upright man. 
Okay. I like what this person says. Many object to the teaching of possible perfection on the grounds that they have never seen a perfect man. Well, in Job's day, God declared that there was only one. Again, in Noah's day, there was only one. Okay? Yep. God saved, God found one perfect or righteous man in the days of Noah. Yet, God declared that Noah was perfect. Genesis 6, 9, Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. And Noah walked with God. That's in your Bible. Okay? Moses speaking God's message to the entire congregation of Israel, in other words, to God's people, declared, Thou shalt be perfect with the Lord thy God. Deuteronomy 18.13 David learned sin's got consequences. God killed his, his baby, his child, out of from, from, from adultery. David learned sin was a big deal to God. That changed David. He became a man after God's own heart. Man, he sought the Lord, sought the Lord for forgiveness, humbled himself, cried out before God, and became a great man of God. David said in Psalms 101 2, I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. You look at Daniel, Joseph, Abraham, Elijah, Elisha. All these people live lives of holiness and perfection. Okay? And the Scripture says in 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, listen to this now, all Scripture, key word, all, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable that the man of God may be perfect. Oh no, Brother Ray, you can't be perfect before God. You can't do like Paul said and be worthy. Yet He told us to walk worthy of our calling. You're going to have sin in your life, Brother Ray. The Bible says, if you say you don't have any sin in your life, you're a liar. No, that ain't what the Bible says. It says, if, if I say I've never sinned, I have not sinned. Okay? Okay? Uh, uh, but all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable that the man of God may be perfect thoroughly furnished unto all good works. It was not until our own dispensation, Paul says, that Christ was preached. Paul goes on and says to the Colossians, whom we preach, warning every man. That's what this video is about, ladies and gentlemen. Warning. Warning every man. I love you. I love you. Okay. Warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Colossians 2.28 That's my goal is to be perfect in the eyes of God. Well, I was born in sin. I've committed many sins before I came to Christ. I have weaknesses. I don't consider myself a perfect man. Job didn't consider himself a perfect man. Okay? But in God's eyes, they were perfect because they hated evil. The Bible says they eschewed evil and loved righteousness. They strive for perfection. They wanted to be perfect. And they got the sin out of their life. And if they sinned, they, they hated it. And they definitely didn't willfully sin. Then we read, Christ gave apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, 
for the work of the ministry, for, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Now listen to this. Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, okay, having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Perfecting holiness. That's a true servant of God. That's a man or a woman walking the straight and narrow way. That's, that's the kind of person I want to be friends with. That's the kind of wife I'd love to have. I hope the Lord will turn Vicky, who God still sees as my wife, okay, all right, into, okay. But I want that kind of woman, man. I want to. I, I want that kind of wife, soulmate, friend. I want my wife to be my friend. I want my wife to be my sister in Christ. It's got a hunger for righteousness. A hunger to walk perfect in the eyes of God. That's so precious. Man, that is precious. That's precious unto God. It's precious unto me. Man, I love to see a person, when I meet a person, it's so rare. Okay, To see their desire in their heart to want to please God and live holy. Okay. And we go on. We go on. 1 Peter 1.15 says, Be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Oh, look at all these so-called Christians. Oh, they, they use the F word. Uh, one of my sons used the word suck. That's filthy talk. Okay? You know, he was referring to the a comment he made in a, in a, in a, in a jokingly way about the secret service, you know, needing secret service protection when I go out, you know, to share the word, okay? And uh, and then he says, "Oh, that's right, they suck." Well, you know, I could have just blew that off, right? But the Lord wants me to teach my sons. This is why. It, this is this is this will cause problems in your life, but you got to obey God. You got to be willing to to be unlike and persecuted and suffer reproach. In a loving way, I said I quoted this scripture to my son. I said, "Son, I say this to you in love." Okay. The word "suck" is a sexual word. It's 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 it's, 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 it's filthy. It's nasty. It's unholy. And I shared this scripture. I said, the Bible says, be ye holy in all manner of conversation. First Peter 1. Don't talk like the world. Don't dress like the world. Don't act like the world. Come out of the world and be separate, saith the Lord. Okay. Then Matthew 5, 48, Jesus said, ladies and gentlemen, our Savior said, be ye therefore perfect. As your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Okay. Ephesians 4.27 says, uh, Don't give place to the devil. Yeah. If you don't give place to the devil, we, we will be perfect in God's eyes. Okay. I like what this writer says. There's no way to have the power of God and there's no way to have power with God without holiness for Jesus himself said everyone that is perfect shall be as his master Luke chapter 6 verse 40 present yourselves holy perfecting holiness in the fear of God I got a video title are you perfecting holiness in the fear of God second Thessalonians 3 3 says the Lord is faithful who who shall establish you and keep you from evil if you let him if that's where your heart is that's where your heart is if your heart wants to please God 
instead of like Jesus said it's not what comes out of the mouth I mean what what goes in the stomach and the mouth but what comes out in the heart there's unlove wanting to leave your husband or leave your wife or 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 he said in the heart is fornication adultery drunkenness lying murder jealousy hatred all these things are in the heart sooner or later they'll come out sooner or later they'll come out if it's in there I love I've always loved this scripture in the book of Jude it's one whole chapter long verse 24 says now unto him that is able notice it says unto him that is able in other words he's able to do this but we gotta let him we gotta want him to we got a hunger and thirst after his righteousness. Now to him now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory. And then Paul goes on in Galatians 5. He says, Walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Now the works of the flesh are made manifest. Of which I tell you, they which do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. To be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is eternal life and peace. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Okay? Now one of the things, one of my greatest weaknesses, ladies and gentlemen, is, has been patience. But the Lord's been teaching me a lot of patience. Oh, I mean, I've, I, I, I believe I've come a long ways. Uh, uh, since my my wife left me, that's that's one of the big things the Lord's been teaching me. Okay. Uh. And uh, and, and in Scripture, James one four says, "Let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing." Colossians 3.14 says, And above all these things, put on love and charity, which is the bond of perfectness. Praise God. Hallelujah. And as it says in Hebrews 6.1, okay, as it says, I'm a, it's worthy of reading again, Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance. In other words, don't go, don't get sin in your life, and you got to go all the way back to the foundation, the basics of Christianity, of repentance, and start all over again. Okay. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on into perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith towards God. Okay? It goes on. But praise God, uh, in closing, I've shared with you how Scripture is so unrightly divided about sin, having no sin in your life. And they unrightly divide it. Say, oh no, you're lying if you say you don't have any sin. And, and, and un, unrightly dividing and twisting the scriptures. I proved it to you in the word, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. I proved to you in the word how they unrightly divide and use an excuse to justify sin in their life and carnality. Misinterpreting and abusing and unrightly dividing the scripture about. There's none righteous, no, not one. There's none that seeketh after God. I can tell you right now, I believe some of you listening to this video is truly seeking after God. So you see how you can unrightly divide the Word? You see how I use Scripture where it says, The fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. So there are righteous people. So you have to put the Scripture in the right context, which is why we're commanded to study the Word. We need to know the word so we so we can counter these lies from the from the deceived preachers 
that's deceiving other people. And so we can teach them using the Word to perfect, hopefully, holiness in their life. For the Word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any, didn't say some, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing, even the dividing asunder of the soul and spirit and the joints and the marrow. Man, getting all the way into the bones. And is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart, mind. But we got to know the Word, right? For all that to happen. We got to be in the Word. You can't just go to church and listen to a few scriptures and and it, it, from the preacher on a Sunday morning or it, it, if you go to Sunday school. Ladies and gentlemen, my heart gets so broken over all of this. It's why I'm, I'm, I'm going on another fast. I love people. I love God. I hate the devil. Okay. There's so much deception out there. There's so many unholy so-called Christians. So much sin in their lives. So much deception. If it were possible, as Jesus said, the very elect could be deceived. Do you want to be deceived? Do you want the Lord to turn you over to a reprobate mind like it says in Romans 1? Changing the image of the incorruptible God into a, a image like into corruptible man? No one, and, the, and Romans 1 says, having pleasure in unrighteousness. Or in Thessalonians where it says, because they rejected the love of the truth, which is the what I preach and share which is the all of the word holiness narrow and straight is the way righteousness many be called few are chosen do you want the Lord to turn you over to strong delusion to believe a lie because you rejected the truth I don't believe anybody that listens to this video really wants that share this video you know you you may be one of those people that the Lord's changing your life. Maybe the Lord is using me to draw you nearer to God. I hope so. If He is, leave me a comment. I need encouragement. I need encouragement. I'm a humble man. I oftentimes ask God to take my life. You know the Bible says, He that loves his life in this life shall lose it in the next life. This world's so wicked and getting wickeder. And most of the church is like the world. Most believers live like the world. Like James said in the book of James, you adulterers and adulteresses to be a friend of the world is to be an enemy of God. It's committing spiritual adultery on God. So many idols in people's lives, whether it's sports. You know, I was reading how much some of these people that play, especially football, making in the, in the, in the tens of millions of dollars a year, one person, it takes, I think it's 11 people on defense and offense on one side of the ball, it takes a, so it takes in, in, in like college football, even in, in, in professional, the off, you got the offense and the defense. Okay. So let's take professional sports where they get paid. All right. So it takes a minimum, I think it's 11 people on each side. I played football as a, a few years as a young boy. So just the starters 
These are starters. Not counting all the backups. Because there's many backup players. Okay. So there has to be at least 22 starters. 11 on offense, 11 on defense. Because the offense... Offensive players don't play on the defense. The defensive players don't, and this, and that's not counting special teams, because a lot of times the special teams players, that's all they do is come in on for for, for uh, kickoffs or punts or returning the ball. Okay. These guys get the, the the running backs, the receivers, the starters. They make in the tens of millions of dollars a year each person. Now, why can how in the world can they get paid so much money? You know how it's such an idol in America. It's such an idol because of all the people that watch it on television. So all the money they make from the commercials because they know all these people are watching their idol. Friends of the world, they can pay these people ridiculous amounts of money. It's truly insane. Whether it be baseball players or basketball players. You know, but we got to come out of the world, as the word says, and be separate. Set our mind on the things of Christ. Okay. Not being carnally minded, walking the straight and narrow, living holy, striving for perfection. As, as we went through Scripture. I love you. God loves you. But He's got rules and He's holy, ladies and gentlemen. He said the way is narrow and straight. He loved, He loves us all. As I tell the people, they say, love, 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 right? All these churches that tickle their ears and love them, love them, love them in. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you ain't loving them if you ain't preaching the whole truth. If you tickling theirs and deceiving them, and they die while they while while you tickling their ears in your church, and they go to hell while you deceiving them and seducing them, I hope a lot of you pastors and preachers will listen to my videos. I hope you people will share my videos to your pastor or pastors. It's so easy to copy the link and paste it and send it through an email or text message. Okay. Let them, let them, let them hear, hear me preaching in front of churches. Let them hear this message about how so many preachers deceive people on these two specific scriptures that I've taught about today. Be willing to be persecuted for righteousness' sake. So you don't lose your soul in hell. Think about it. The Word says, For if the righteous scarcely be saved. There's another scripture. This hit me. So there's righteous people, right? Like we used some other scripture before. Fervent prayer of a righteous person avails much. Uh, uh, the eyes of the Lord on the righteous. There's another scripture right there. For if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the sinner and the ungodly appear? So there's not very many people going to be saved, ladies and gentlemen. So don't be delusional. Don't let the Lord turn you over to delusion. Sin is, that's sin, that's pleasure in sin for a season. I tell people when I go out street preaching, don't you want your prayers answered when you pray? So the fervent prayer of a righteous person avails much? Don't, don't you want to go to heaven and not hell? Don't deceive yourself. Leave me a comment. May the Lord bless you.